welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitty Mary and today is another impact analysis. Zero waste often revolves around these two very essential concepts of refusing and reducing. And while a really big part of living more sustainably and living more ethically and more consciously is about phasing out certain products or boycotting certain things, saying no to things that are unsustainable, we can't really phase out everything. That's pretty impractical. So for the things that we cannot phase out, we reduce. For one, it might be more sustainable to live without a phone. However, that's really bad advice. It's very impractical. What do we do instead? We have to find ways of minimizing the impact of the devices that we use. And that's what today's video is about. We're gonna talk about the impact of smartphones and how to become a more sustainable smartphone user. But before we get started, this video is sponsored. Da, 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 da. This video is sponsored by none other than Fairphone. Fairphone carries the line of the most sustainably and ethically produced smartphones in the world. They're made with recycled materials, which you'll see in a second why that's so nifty. They're B Corp and Fairtrade certified. They're paying their workers living wages and advocates for more transparency in the tech industry overall. Fairphone also accepts old phones and recycles them. And in 2020, they recycled 17,000 phones. Furthermore, Fairphone's design is made to last. It's easy to repair the phone yourself so you can change parts rather than replacing the whole phone, which means a lower impact, which means less waste. Fairphone also has a public impact report that one of the most thorough I've ever seen. So if you, like me, really want to dive into the material, Fairphone is incredibly transparent about their work and what needs to change in the industry. However, this video is not only sponsored by Fairphone, I also got the pleasure of talking to Fairphone CEO, Eva Rauens, and that conversation will be a part of this video as well. I got to ask her some questions about the industry, so we are getting sort of like an inside perspective as well which i'm super excited about also let's just have a just a second of appreciation for the first guest that i have on my impact analysis series and also that it's someone so incredibly cool the tech industry is responsible for 3.7 percent of global emissions which sounds like not a lot a small amount but it's actually around the same as the aviation industry and it is expected that by 2040 the tech industry will be responsible for around 14 percent of global emissions. Also around 1.4 billion smartphones is produced every single year. Around 88% of Danes own a smartphone and about 3.5 billion people in the world own a smartphone, a number that's steadily rising. So let's talk about what it costs to make one. The majority of the impact of your smartphone, actually 75% of the impact of your smartphone is generated during the manufacturing stage. And on average, producing one smartphone emits about 70 kilos of CO2. The manufacturing stage includes mining, refining, transport, and assembly of the dozens of chemical elements that make up cutting edge tech iron for the speakers and the microphones, aluminium and magnesium for the frames and screen, copper, silver and gold for the electronic circuits, graphite and lithium for the batteries, silicon for the processor and lead and tin for the solderings. The average smartphone also contains about 17 different rare earth metals that are scattered in very small concentrations across the planet. So a lot of mining goes into getting very small amounts of metals. And the mining industry, which we have talked about in basically every single impact video at this point, but the mining industry, especially when it comes to technology, is rife with slave labor, forced child labor, and overall incredibly dangerous and unethical working conditions. Conditions that the overall industry takes very little responsibility for, which is a big issue. Gold mining for electronics in the Amazon is a major cause of deforestation there as well as many other places on earth. And in Chile, completely unfathomable amounts of water is being evaporated to create lithium batteries, and that has a big impact on local farming. If you want to know more about batteries, by the way, I have an impact analysis is about electric cars where we go a lot more into detail with that element. And mining related to the tech industry in the Democratic Republic of Congo has funded civil war. Can you get into detail a little bit about what FAIR means in this context? FAIR actually mainly applies for us to our supply chain and what it is about the people in the supply chain who make the phone that you buy in the end that they are treated in a fairer way. It starts at the mines. So we are there from the start to jointly see how we actually can improve the situation on mine sites towards a level that, hey, they have access to, uh, to a broader market. That is on mine sites, but 
at the other end of the supply chain, and so in the factory where the phones are assembled, there are people working for a minimum wage. And actually, in the area that they work, there is quite a big gap between a minimum wage and a living wage. And a living wage allows you to, to uh, nah, they have food and a house and save something for uh, uh, when you're uh, retired, stuff like that. Send your kids to school. To bridge that gap, people now make ridiculous over hours to, to, to ensure that they have an income they actually can live off. A Fairphone established a program um, that's called the Living Wage Program, where we pay a bonus per device that bridges that gap between a minimum wage and a living wage. And it is less than two euro, two dollars per phone. That's that's less than a cup of coffee. If if you think of this that hey, that is actually the amount you need to pay per phone, it's actually ridiculous. That it's that's- absolutely ridiculous. So since so many resources go into creating this product, it must be really durable and able to last a long time, right? Right? Yeah, logically that would make sense, but um, no. The impact is not just one thing, but it's several different factors spread over several different parts of the supply chain, but the majority of which is happening in the manufacturing stage. It is really uh, on multiple levels and, and moments in the supply chain. So it's really a system change. Because yeah, you need to, if you want a device to remain in use longer, you already need to design it differently. But you also need to stimulate them people to actually use it as you intended it. On average, consumers change their phones every two and a half years, even though we could have our phones for way longer. And of course, planned obsolescence plays a big part in why we change up our tech, but there is another reason as well, and it's vanity. Studies find that many consumers see their phone as representation of their wealth and success. It's a symbol of how much money you have, if you can change it up. It's a status symbol, and it's something you use to express yourself or stay on trend. We often see new models of phones being launched with changes just big enough so that they're visibly different from the past models but functionally they have the same qualities. This is companies nudging consumers into changing up their devices even though the thing they had before works just fine. Also most devices aren't made to be repaired and many tech companies are actually doing everything that they can to prevent consumers from repairing their devices. As such, many tech companies are designing products that are meant to be disposable, which is incredibly wasteful when it takes so many resources to create the device in the first place. Every year, 65,000 tons of smartphones are thrown away, which is about 152 million units, only a fraction of which is being recycled. This means that we're facing an incomprehensible amount of e-waste, aka the fastest growing category of waste currently, because it's incredibly expensive to take phones apart once they've been put together. So many companies are not prioritizing or investing in that technology which means that the majority of our e-waste ends up in landfills in low-income countries where it pollutes water, soil and air, and they don't have the proper infrastructure to take care of this toxic waste. How important in tech is repairability? Because now it's a bit crazy. You drop your screen, but you replace your full device because it's most often more expensive to get it repaired versus to to buy a new phone. Yeah, if you think about it, that's that's quite ridiculous. Plus, so so fair phones are modular. Um, it is a bit like bricks of Lego. It is seven uh, modules put together, and that is a smartphone. Um, but it allows you to switch and, and, and swap actually those separate modules individually. So recycling is important because yes, with all the e-waste lying around, it is an important thing and an, a more of a cleanup task that we need to do. But to be honest, the biggest impact is way higher uh, at a way higher level. So. Uh, longevity and repair, I would say. A new report from Fairphone showed that keeping your smartphone for five to seven years instead of the average 2.5, you can reduce the impact of your smartphone with 28 to 41%. But I mentioned planned obsolescence really briefly there, so let's talk a little bit more about that as well. 
Planned obsolescence is the calculated act of making sure the existing versions of a product will become dated or useless within a given time frame. For smartphones, that means creating software that works better on new models while deliberately slowing down older models, nudging consumers to update their devices. This is also sometimes referred to as programmed obsolescence. Planned obsolescence can also mean hardware being more prone to breaks after a certain period of time. Another example of planned obsolescence, just real quick, is light bulbs. Light bulbs can actually be manufactured to last years, even decades, but instead they're made to break and be replaced. And that's the short story. If you want to know more about this, I do recommend looking up the Centennial Light and the Phoebus Cartel for the whole story. The difference between plant obsolescence and something simply just wearing down over time is that with plant obsolescence, it's intentionally built into the design from the beginning. So the disposal part is an essential part of how we consume the product. So it's really the circular way of thinking. So now it's a super linear industry where you buy something, yeah, you, you, you take materials, you produce something, you use it for a while and you throw it away. And we try to make yeah that more circular. Now for the part we've all been waiting for, I guess. But how do you then consume sustainably? in terms of technology and smartphones especially. Well, the good news is the most sustainable thing you can do is make your current phone last as long as possible. That's amazing, right? <laughs> That's so nice. Simply making sure that the device you own now you will have for as long as possible is by far the most sustainable thing you can do. If you're looking to get a new phone, and at one point in time that is going to happen because we don't have completely circular systems in terms of technology yet. so. What do you do when you need a new phone then? Then one thing you can do is look for brands that create technology in a more sustainable way, like Fairphone, or you can go for secondhand or pre-loved options or refurbished options instead. Another essential part of consuming tech sustainably is taking care of it as well as you can. So use screen protectors and covers, etc., to make sure that it doesn't break or that it's not damaged during use. Also, I recommend advocating for or supporting people or organizations that advocate for more energy efficient batteries and more political action in terms of plant obsolescence or generally more transparency in the supply chains of tech and supporting people that keep the big companies responsible. What's really important for Fairphone is then we reach out to other companies and say, hey, join in. Because then suddenly the effect becomes way bigger than when we keep it to ourselves and say, hey, this is our unique selling point. So the, our theory of change really involves creating followers and inviting other players to join in on the solutions that we, uh, we found. And lastly, sell or recycle your old phone. It is such a waste simply to just have something lay in a drawer and never ever use it again. So if you do have old tech, sell it, give it away, recycle it, etc. so it doesn't go to waste. That's what we can do. Can you see a difference in the market for smartphones or technology in general? Uh, has there been a difference that you have noticed since the launch of the first Fairphone? Yeah, for sure. Because when, when Fairphone 1 was launched, sustainability or fairness was just no topic. Things are changing. And I also think that specifically in Europe, legislation plays a role there huh? because that creates a bit of a level playing field. Yeah. I hoped that it would go faster eh? and, and, and I hope that more and more people in other companies would yeah, take our philosophy at heart and say, hey, I also want, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I want to take environment and social issues into account when I design a product. But yeah, there is, uh, things are in motion. And to be honest, more environmentally than socially. And that was it for this video. I hope that you guys liked it. If you're curious about other parts of the impact of tech and sort of like things in context of tech, I've left some videos down below, especially my impact of the internet video. If you want to check that out, we're talking about data storage, etc. Lots of stuff, lots of stuff. We also have a little bit about e-waste, but more importantly, it's about the non-physical impact of being online. I've left that down below. Also, a big thank you to Fairphone for sponsoring this video and a big thank you to their CEO Ava for joining me in this video. Thank you so much. I hope to see you guys in my next video. Take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye.
Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!